Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmesino with Shaking Analytics here on the Halftime Show on Stock Charts TV. Thanks for joining me. Each and every week, we kind of go over what's happening here in the markets and uh, you know, try to use the power gauge to kind of make sense of what's happening. So today, we got an ugly day, um, a continuation of ugly days, really, um, sort of a string together of about five in a row. And uh, we're just going to look at some names that we're all familiar with, the Fan Mag or Fang names. Um, there's a lot of acronyms out there, but it's the Facebooks, the Amazons, the, the Apples, and so forth. We're going to look at those mega cap uh, tech names. We're going to look at one sector today, the semiconductor sector, and just kind of look at, see where our relative strength is um, in conjunction with the power gauges as well. So we'll, we're going to see a lot of the power gauges have broken down, uh, but they really just been downgraded to one level below bullish, which is a neutral plus um, in most cases. But Again, we're going to look at some names like Netflix as well, which has had a dramatic change in trend. So let's take a look at the charts today. Let's get started right away, and uh, we'll get right into it here and see what we see. All right, everybody, here we are on the ACP platform, and I've kind of preloaded a list of uh, some favorite names here that we all kind of know, love, and follow, um, but uh, they're not uh, very loved this week. Uh, you can see Netflix down another 10 and some odd change percent. Uh, just getting worse and worse. So we're going to go just sort of look and you know go through and look at the ratings. You see, Apple is the one that we're starting on off with here alphabetically, uh, and that's neutral plus. But you look at the financials; that's more of a valuation uh, trade, right? So we'll, we'll look at those uh, on on the chicken system as well. But just from a standpoint of you know pulling back to support, you know you could look at this consolidation area between you know the one sixty six and as low as one fifty six. Uh, kind of right where it is right now, uh, you know, as an area of support, obviously this particular high can come into play, which is again, right in that, that area where it held before. So in this particular area, let's just, you know, again, I'm, I know I'm using the word hope here a lot, but we are oversold on the RSI. Um, the MACD has broken down. There's no doubt about that. And our rating has been downgraded. But if we look at um, on the taken analytics side of things, uh, almost everything's kind of a neutral plus except for uh, Amazon um, and Google. Actually, I'll put it in the other Google, G-O-O-G-L. Let me add that in there. That's the one we rate. <clears throat> That's up there as neutral plus as well. So I'll just get rid of that one. Here on the fly, you can see how we use the check-in system. All right. So uh, if I go back to Apple, you know, down that around that 158 level, as we kind of called out. And there's, you know, kind of where we're sitting in this area. Now, relative strength wise, it's obviously held up better than the index, right? Now, the, don't forget, it's a big component of the index. There's no doubt about that. At the same time, we've seen this before, right? We've seen some of these names when the markets get sold off, the relative strength stays intact. Now, look, mega cap tech is you know is is definitely an area that um, is widely held right there's no doubt about that but if we look at the power gauge and kind of where we're at the financials as i said have kind of been uh, in the bearish zone for quite some time and that's really because of price to book and price to sales there's no doubt cash flow and some debt levels have kind of um you know pushed it to the negative side but from a valuation standpoint you know, people are kind of just rethinking the economic outlook and so valuation um, cyclicals versus growth and things of that nature are all being reconsidered here. And so the important part is to follow not only the rating, but the relative strength as well. And it still looks strong. I can't, can't say it doesn't, but we are breaking down. And so this is the case where sometimes good stocks can go down, right? We've got a weak trend. Uh, the industry has turned weak as well. And so we just got to be cognizant of that and start to pick and choose some technical levels where we could consider this potentially way, way oversold, even more than our indicator is suggesting here as well. So if we move on to uh, Amazon on the next level, again, uh, bearish all the way across the board. Now, this stock has been sort of dead money for a year, right? I mean, I hate using that term, but you know, between the range bound levels of 2890 and 3700, about a thousand points of range, right? It's really not gone anywhere. Now, Amazon's we're almost clicking on all cylinders, right, from a business standpoint. But obviously, they're going to be susceptible to some slowdowns as well. Again, this is not an economics class, but we're looking at, you know, this particular name being way, way oversold 
Um, and that's what happens in these kind of environments. But our, our, our rating was pretty well uh, situated for this, even at the higher level. So let's go take a look and see where we are here on Amazon. And we've been negative relative strength for quite some time, right? Quite, quite some time. And it's really been uh, a battle between bearish, neutral, and a brief, I mean, a cup of coffee, a coffee break of bullishness on the rating. But really, since those levels of 3,500, which is closest, you know, close to the high end of the range, we've been neutral and then obviously downgraded it here right around the turn of January, right around that 34, yeah, about the 3,400 level. So that's important, right? I mean, you want to make sure that, you know, we're not getting starstruck because it's Amazon and every fan mag stock out there has to be held just because it's widely held. You know, we got to protect your money as well. So that's what the power gauge is kind of alerting you to the fact is not only is relative strength breaking down, which you've got multiple ways to kind of look at that uh, on the RSI level and the MACD and many, many other indicators, way too many to go over here for me um, on the ACP platform, but you've got to just look at these levels and, and, and make some, you know, common sense judgments. You've got the crossovers here around 3,452. <clears throat> if you saw our, our, our rating was being downgraded right around that same time, you had a few areas uh, of, of alert being called out. So Meta, Facebook, uh, Meta still with the symbol FB, um, kind of like Alphabet with the symbol Google still, um, you know, uh, obviously selling off here. Now we're really on this area of support, which I thought would be a little bit more firm in that 300, 290 to 300 level. We're kind of right there as we speak. Again, RSIs are signaling over. So I haven't seen this in quite some time. And it doesn't mean, you know, necessarily it's going to bounce from here because, you know, Facebook has really had its own struggles internally from a technical standpoint, uh, but also from uh, the external standpoint of just, just kind of the behavior practices and business practices that they have. Again, I'm not here to question that. I'm just here to follow the stock. But at the same time, we're gonna, we got a neutral rating on the, on the name, right? Um, again, if I go to Facebook down here um, on our ratings level, there's that area of support, which we thought would be a little bit more firm uh, around the 350 level. And obviously right around the 300 level, which is kind of where we're headed now, uh, right here around that 295, 290 to 300 level. Really thought this would be areas of support. But again, it doesn't matter what I think. Look at the relative strength. Look where we were on the neutral uh, rating on the, on the stock. And obviously just recently downgraded it. Um, to a full neutral in the beginning in the first week of January, which would, would have been putting the stock rate around a 330 level as well. So again, when, those rel when, when the uh, ratings change, you obviously can make changes too. Um, let me add, let me just put in Google here real quick. Not going to be in the list, but I'm going to use it so I can have the same symbol on both systems. Um, so looking right around that 2,500 level, Again, you see these areas of technical breakdowns happening right around that 3,000 level or so. And um, again, we're neutral plus. Now, this is a much stronger name fundamentally. However, when technicals start to break down, we downgrade it. And that's kind of the beauty of the rating is that it does downgrade it on the fly. So let's look at Google. And we had a relative strength change right here, right on our system, right around that 3,000 level, but our rating was really downgraded back in this area and really never got upgraded around that 2,900, almost right on the 3,000 level. And it's really just been sideways back and forth with money flow and then relative strength finally broke down. So again, if we're looking just from a technical standpoint, right around that 2,400 level looks like support 2,500. We maybe, maybe see uh, it go down another 40 some odd points, but Again, in a market that's selling off when relative strength starts to break down, um, you know, all bets are off until we, you know, any, until we get some validation on the upside, right? Um, let's look at Intel. Now, this is a stock that's been, uh, it's had a decent start to the year, but obviously reversed here now. Nowhere near oversold levels, but you can see we're neutral plus on the name. And it looks like I forgot to add it to the list here on IMTC. I'll show you how you do that real quick. Just add a symbol, and then it'll pull up the chart. And so uh, we actually had the opposite happening here. We had a nice 
rating on the name. It's broken down, though. We downgraded it at the beginning of this week. But that relative strength was signaling areas of exposure that we want to be sort of involved in. Now, I'm not saying this is something that you, you want to avoid, but the relative strength holding on, and yet the overall market environment is not helping, right? So we got to be, be cognizant of the trends as well, not only in the stocks, but in, in the market. You don't want to be chasing names in a down market, right? So look for areas of support around that 50, 48, 45 to 50, we'll call it. We're at 51 already, and we want to start to see some sort of reprieve in selling, right? We just want to see a little bit of, a, uh, of an exhaustion in the selling before we start taking any kind of positions in anything, really. But let's look at Microsoft here. Uh, again, a very strong fundamental name, but again, breaking down with the market environment. So, you know, you don't want to get in the way um, you know, of a freight train here. And these names are big, right? They're, they're widely held and they're being sold. Uh, so our rating was downgraded back here in the beginning of January. Almost everything this first week started to break down. And a couple of other signs here, I'd say it's some lower highs and really uh, sort of a wedge that form, formed here and then obviously broke down. And with that move back to the 320 level, um, you know, that could have been your area where you've exited. But again, we've got a weak stock here and the trend is changing. And the company, now hear what I'm saying to you, weak stock, but strong company. Now, obviously, fundamentally, Microsoft has, you know, is working on hitting on all cylinders out there, but it doesn't mean the stock can't get discounted with the market. So again, just be careful when you start to look at these big, big names. Um, and, you know, they are getting attractive. You can't argue with that, but it doesn't seem to be, you know, that we found any kind of uh, areas of support. Now, here's one that really just kind of fell apart. Obviously, the stock hit 700 today. It's been halved, right? We are down roughly 50% off of its recent high of around 695, 700 or so back in November. And the relative strength has obviously been breaking down for quite some time and it's been oversold here now for weeks. So again, from a, from a standpoint of fundamental, the, obviously the rating has uh, been downgraded. But if I look at Netflix <clears throat> here down another 10, almost 11% today, pretty amazing. Uh, relentless selling here. Um, Money flow has been negative for, for quite some time. It actually preceded the relative strength change. So in that 600 to 650 range, when we started to break down, right, <clears throat> not only did money flow break down, not only did relative strength break down, but obviously our rating turned to neutral, right? And so you, you'd be able to see that as you're tracking these names. So you want to be cognizant of that. So you know, once you have the rating inside the ACP platform, if you see a change in, in trend, obviously you're seeing a change <clears throat> in the rating as well. And NVIDIA is basically the same setup here. And we'll quickly look at SMH before I run out of time. And you're getting the same kind of setup here, right? So NVIDIA is now just starting to break down, but the rating was downgraded uh, weeks ago at the 280 level. Let's look at SMH real quick. Uh, we do have a rating on this. And obviously relative strength is now getting even weaker. So again, everything across the board Breaking down, you know, we're going to be looking for signs of, uh, of exhaustion here. We're just not seeing it, not yet. Okay, everybody, that's all we have for this week's halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. <clears throat> Thanks again for joining me, and we'll be back next week. Be well, be safe, and use your stops out there. Be careful this week. All right, take care. Thanks. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.